Hey everybody, welcome back to video number two of the 1932 Aston Martin engine build part. So this is actually not an engine build, but more of an engine modification. Did some hop up on it and we're adding an electrical circuit to uh, power lights and brake lights. So the first video we installed the new flywheel at the timing key and we took out the governor. So in this one, we're gonna complete that process by wiring up the rectifier regulator and powering a battery. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so I got the electrical connections made for the uh, charging coils. I've got a ground wire for the ground from the uh, regulator, and I've got a power wire. I was going to put the battery back here, but I'm realizing because I'm running a differential, uh, putting the battery right here in bracketry was going to get in the way of being able to take the axle in and out. So I'm going to probably move it up the front, in front of the pedals. So I'm working out right now, I'm getting a little frustrated with it, trying to mount this best of steel. Trying to put something so this tensions down um, and holds the battery in place. So uh, working that out, I, I, I don't know, I'm getting a little frustrated with this. I'm taking a break from that. So I moved on over here to the throttle assembly. I put this NR Racing throttle assembly on here. Uh, I got the return spring. I had to shorten that a little bit. Uh, so that now works fine. As you pull it forward, it returns. The throttle returns on its own. And when I put the tank on, it was touching right here. So I had to hammer a, a little dent in the bottom of the tank. The tank just sits too close to the tank. This is designed for a motor probably that has the tank removed. Like a racing engine would have a separate tank somewhere else with a, with a pulse pump or something like that. So I'm working now on the throttle cable. And the throttle cable I got is different than the one I've got in the past. I used to buy a kit that came with a different style. This has got a little nubbin on the end and it came with these little, these little brass fittings. And inside the brass fitting is a little ferrule thing if I can unscrew this with one hand, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Oh, I guess it's coming off. And inside there's this little small piece. So what that does, I think it's kind of like a fitting for a pipe. So you put these on, put the little ferrule thing in there on top of the, the plastic piece, tighten them up, and that crushes it, and that holds the housing in place so it doesn't go back and forth. So I think that's going to work great. Um, so anyway, I just I will have to build a throttle bracket to reach the throttle pedal, so which I've done on all my other cars, so no big deal there. Uh, this is not quite long enough. It's a little shorter than I wanted it to be, but it will fit, and we'll just make a quarter-inch rod to attach it to. So that'll be the next thing to make the throttle functional. So at any rate, um, kind of mid-project right here. I get a little frustrated with the bracket for that deal here so I'm working out a way to clamp this down with some maybe something like this and just bolt it to the ground anyway I'm, I'm working on it uh, I'm not totally happy with that either I want something simple so I can get it in and out easily and something that will secure it and be out of the way right now it's completely out of the way the pedals the pedals don't affect anything so there's plenty of room for pedal travel and it's up in front where there are suspension so maybe it'll be a little smoother ride uh, the back tends to be a little rougher so Anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm done for the day. Uh, we'll carry on later. Uh, made some good progress. This is mounted down here on the frame. So it's out of the way. Uh, I put it on the cool side of the engine. I figure this is cooler on this side of the motor than on the exhaust side. Although there is more space on that side. That side tends to be fairly hot because that's where the exhaust pipe will be. So we'll move moving on and carrying on. Okay, so that's just mocked up. I just have this sitting here loose. I didn't tighten it. There's a little set screw right here for the cable. And this little ferrule is all tightened up in there so the housing is locked into that brass piece. So that's all set ready to go. Next thing I'll have to do to get the throttle operational is to fish this through the body. And then take this piece of quarter inch rod, bend a 90 degree on it, hook it to the pedal, and then hook that to that. So, progress. Okay, one more part that I bought that I've never used before. Uh, this is actually a pretty neat solution. Um, the other pieces I've got, I've got something similar to this, but I just got it zip tied in place and it's kind of janky. Uh, this is really well done. So somebody made this part and it'd be a little hard for me to hold the camera. So I may have to go recruit my son to help me real quick. So hold on. Okay, so this is really cool. So this little bracket that they made up holds that filter. And then through here, there's this nice bolt fits through there, then there's a spacer. I'm assuming it goes through there. I'm gonna put this little washer down here and then we'll go put this on the motor. Okay, so this goes right on this little boss right here by the valve cover. 
um, just screw this thing in there and we'll tighten this up later but for now that's there and then we're going to take out the original bit that's here this little uh, thing that just shoves inside the valve cover nothing fancy and the thing that comes with it is bent already like this it comes with a little clamp so put the clamp on here I don't know what size this is going to be. Do I get lucky? Do I get lucky? Yeah, I do. This really looks really, really big for this. I keep dropping things. Tighten this up a little bit because it's really, really large. All right, so we'll put that on there. Slide that into here. Okay. That's going on. All right, cool. We'll put the, the hose clamp on there to tighten it down. Okay, and then this just slides right in the hole. Now what that does, this the crankcase has positive ventilation, it sucks atmosphere in, and so you don't want dirty atmosphere to go. I might have to trim that down a little bit. It's a little too long. But anyway, it goes right in there. So I'm going to trim that down and make that fit a little bit better. But that's a nice solution right there. I'm liking that. Cool. All right. We'll trim that down a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty slick. I'm liking this. So this, I shortened it up by about a couple inches and uh, fits right inside there. Inside this valve cover, there's a little piece that keeps this from going in too deep and uh, fits really nicely. Looks really cool. It's got a little bling, a little chrome. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. So pretty happy with that result. So that's a nice little bit. And our racing had that. Uh, so the call wasn't too terribly expensive. So yeah, made some progress today. Um, got a bit more to do to get this wiring all done. And then uh, we'll call it the end of this video pretty quickly here. Okay, so I solved my mounting dilemma of the battery. So it's gonna go behind the axle next to the motor. Um, underneath the frame rails, I put some three-quarter by three-quarter tubing and riveted my tray to it, and then I bent this little piece of one-inch angle iron uh, or iron just to hold this rubber piece. And putting this on with one hand might be a bit of a chore, but there it goes. So that is nice and secure. So then the little battery rubber goes in here, and then the battery, oops, and the battery is going to go in here like this, battery cover on top. And then I made this bracket, and over here there's a piece of angle iron welded to the side of the frame with holes in it to take these bolts. So this goes down here, and the deal hooks on there. So let me pause the video and I'll show you what that does real quick because I can't do both. Okay, so I've got the strap on the hook, and those bolts line up down there. And as you tighten these things, it will pull the strap down, tension the strap, and keep the battery in place. So, mission accomplished. Yay, I love when a plan comes together, even if it's the third or fourth attempt at doing something. Uh, that's the thing with cycle carts. Um, they don't always go exactly the way you think it's going to, and you got to come up with creative solutions for some stuff. So, uh, moving on. Okay, so we got the new fuel line. This is from... Uh, Hang on, stop a second. I forgot where I got this. Okay, so I got this fuel line in. Uh, the old fuel line was hard and brittle and starting to crack. I think the fuels in this fuel line is uh, my dad's cart, the same problem. This fuel line just got real brittle and hard. Uh, so BMI Carts has the fuel line. This is called Tigon fuel line. It's supposed to be really good for, for uh, not only what we do, but also just it's real durable as far as fuels go. It's a 3 16 ID, 5 16 OD, sold by the foot. I got three feet because if I'm going to move the, I might move the tank later. So I had to get new clamps because the clamps broke. So I'm going to put this little sleeve. Oh, where'd the sleeve go? There it is. Back on the fuel line to protect it because it's when it's in here, it's going to run and lay right against the motor down in here. So there's a space here for where the fuel line goes. And so this, there's a little sleeve on the original fuel line. It's just a protective sleeve. So we're going to put that on here and then put this thing back together. So uh, we'll feed that in there like that. Put the tank back on. This fuel line has to kind of feed through here. All right. 
tank back in place. Oop, it's trying to go back inside the motor here. There we go. All right, and this is gonna go down here underneath your throttle cable. It's gonna rest in that little spot right there. And go right onto your fuel filter. Which looks like I might need to shorten it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna shorten that up a little bit, so. I cut off about an inch. I want to put the new hose clamp on here. And then we can feed it onto the carburetor. Put it up on top and we'll slide this onto the carburetor. Okay, there's that. I'll pull this down so we can get to it later. All right, done deal. That is finished. Cool. Pull it up a little bit, put tension. All right, we're good to go. All righty then. So I think we can call that the end of this video. I just got to tighten the tank back down. All the mods are done to the motor. Um, so it went pretty well. So thanks you guys for watching. Appreciate all the subscriptions and the comments. If you have any questions on cycle carts, send me a message. I'm glad to hear from you. Have a great day.